When it's time to intubate, things move fast. And as the nurse, your role is critical. In this video, I'll break down exactly what your role as the ER nurse is so you can stay calm, prepared, and protect your patient. So the goal of rapid sequence intubation is to secure the airway as safely as possible using a sedative followed immediately by a paralytic to make the intubation process, the insertion of the ET tube as smooth as possible. Patients are typically intubated as a result of respiratory failure, being unable to maintain their oxygenation or ventilation, or they can't protect their airway. As a nurse, recognizing when intubation is needed is key. You will spend the most time with patients, so you're a key player in monitoring and communicating with the team when more aggressive interventions are necessary. Delays can lead to rapid decompensation, so early action truly saves lives. That's why you're a key player in keeping your patients safe. Keep the patient safe during RSI. And that starts even before the medications are given. Recognize when a patient needs to be intubated early to avoid delays because waiting too long can lead to worse outcomes. Pre-oxygenate the patient well. Use a non-rebreather or bag valve mask to give, them a, to give them a buffer when the tube is being placed. Make sure you have at least one strong IV. Two is better, but one strong one is perfect and that you're cycling the blood pressure very frequently. And if the blood pressure is already low, you may need fluids or the provider may just have to give push dose pressors before beginning rapid sequence intubation. Finally, your most important job during rapid sequence intubation is to watch the SpO2. The doctor's focus will be on their airway. So if oxygen levels start to drop, speak up firmly and clearly. This could change the course of the intubation. Let's solidify this information. Before rapid sequence intubation begins, before meds are even given, you want to create the best scenario for the intubation. And that starts with good pre-oxygenation and a stable blood pressure. Pre-oxygenation builds up oxygen reserves, giving the patient more time before their oxygen levels drop during the apnea. Remember, while the provider is attempting to intubate, after the medications have been given, the patient is apneic not breathing at all so that pre-oxygenation that we did that we gave the patient it gives him a buffer in that meantime while the patient is, while the provider is attempting to place the et tube the goal is at least three to five minutes of pre-oxygenation using a non-rebreather or bag valve mask just as important is making sure that the blood pressure is stable RSI medications can lower blood pressure, and if your patient is already hypotensive, they could arrest during the procedure if nothing is done. That's why fluids or pressors may be needed before the intubation. So next time, if the blood pressure is low, such as an SBP less than 90, ask the docs, hey, are we doing any fluids, or what is the plan for the blood pressure? And then that will get addressed. During RSI, you need to know your medications and the order they're giving it. So the sedative is first, followed by the paralytic. Just again, the sedative goes first, followed by the paralytic. The most common sedative use is a Tominate because it's hemodynamically stable. It works fast and doesn't drop the blood pressure as much. There's other medications that can be used to sedate the patient like ketamine, and it comes with its own certain situations when it's used. After the etomidate or ketamine, but again, commonly the et etomidate, comes the paralytic. Succedonicoline is the most common used paralytic. It's rapid and short acting, but due to its side effects of hyperkalemia, it's avoided in patients who may be prone to it, such as burn patients, renal patients, rhabdo patients, or patients that we don't have a medical history of. If succedonicoline isn't appropriate for your patient, another medication that can be used is rocuronium. It's going to be a good alternative. It does take a little longer to kick in and it can last up to an hour. Again, as a nurse, your job is to confirm which medications are going to get used because you're going to be the one drying them up. You need to understand what they do, the order to give them in, and then be ready for any complications, especially if the patient is unstable. During RSI, your focus during the procedure shifts to watching the vitals, especially oxygenation saturation. The provider is locked in on the airway, 
on placing the endotracheal tube and they will not notice if there's a drop in the spo2 that's where you come in if you see the sats falling the spo2 falling you need to call it out clearly and firmly don't hesitate you can say something like spo2 is 95 or sats are 95 now they're 90 and they're dropping this is going to prompt them to stop to reoxygenate the patient and adjust their approach, avoiding a crash. As a nurse, again, you're the eyes and the voice for the patient. You're keeping them safe. And you, again, are going to be watching the vitals of the SPO2 like a hawk. And you're going to clearly and firmly, without hesitating, tell the team, tell the provider when they begin to drop. And once the tube is in, your next priority is going to be making sure that it's in the right spot. The gold standard is the entitled CO2. This can be done with a, a colorometric detector, which turns from purple to yellow if the CO2 is present, or with waveform capnography, which gives you a real-time graph. But again, you can use either the little small box that changes color or capnography. Again, the RT is typically at the head of the bed with the provider handling this, but you are aware that that's one of the ways that we check for placement is there a color change is are we detecting co2 when we're bagging the patient besides this you're also going to check for bilateral breath sound for equal chest rise and again improving oxygenation and then finally a chest x-ray will be ordered and for a final securement for i mean for a final confirmation so that we can see how far down the et tube is but don't wait for it to don't wait for the x-ray to secure the tube the rt typically secures the tube and just help if they need it again verifying placement quickly and correctly is one of the most important safety steps post intubation and by the way if you're finding this helpful and want to save time and energy with mastering the chaos of the er check out our book and course they are packed with everything you need including foundational material quizzes and practical tips to help you feel confident and prepared in the er you can find the links in the pinned comment and description box below and as always teamwork makes the dream work and here at emergency chaos we are proactive not reactive